Varsity Blows. Morning. It is Wednesday the 11th of November today. Uh, I am just up to go to work yesterday. Uh, I did go out on the bike actually, but it was raining so much. I didn't kind of do any footies or anything and I don't have a hangover. But I tell you what, this bike, it was always going to be hard after the R1 to get on a bike and, you know, really, really enjoy it. But this, this is obviously like the Uber Hyper bike, the uh, Chickster 1300 Hyper Suzuki. I think it's one of those beautiful bikes ever. I know it's got all these bulbous bits on, and I know it looks a little bit kind of garish, but I really, really like it. And when you're riding it, you just feel like you're riding on the back of like, like really comfortable Exocet missile. The engine is uh, so powerful, but it's actually quite manageable. I mean, yesterday I was going around and it was chucking it down, and, and it was horrible. It was cold, wet, a bit nice around. And the funny thing is, is although you know every time you, you feel the power underneath you, you think, yeah, this bike wants to be ridden fast. It's just so comfortable to take around town because the fact that it's so big. For me, it's six foot three. You know, I can really kind of enjoy right in the riding position. And um, yeah, I mean, as I say, the engine it's just something else. Obviously, I had it in the uh, the B King, which is a retuned version of it. Um, I just yeah, just really really enjoying the bike. To be honest with you, I'm going to be taking it back to street bike on Friday. I'll get Jace to run through all the massive tech specs, features and benefits and stuff like that. But from a pure rider's point of view, and obviously it's all my opinion, um, it's a blooming great bike. I can't believe it's actually cheaper than the R1 as well, which is a crazy thing, but I would still plump for the R1, just because that was something exceptional. But this is an awesome, awesome hyper sports Grand Tour type bike, and it's so comfy. Um, and as I say, really easy to ride, well balanced. It does feel heavy and big in the corners, because it is heavy and big, but it doesn't detract from its like handling too much, you know what I mean? I mean you're not going to throw it around like you would an R6 or a, you know, a Ninja 600 or something like that. But, if that's a beautiful, it has got that power. Anyway, I'm going to get on it and get to work, because I'm not late for once today. And, uh, yeah, enjoy my riding. Look at the beast! It is so beautiful. I can't believe how clean it is it's still, actually. Uh, so, yes, rode in this morning on the Hayabusa. Um, it's actually a little bit wet underfoot, but you know what? It's not chucking it down, so I'm going to try and get a bit of mileage done on this now. Because um, it just wants to eat up the miles. It is obviously that kind of stupidly fastness that uh, you get from a, a hyper bike or whatever, hyper uber super bike. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, the comfort and everything else in it is it's just great. Coming in this morning, it was damp, it was wet. You're fine. I mean, you've got to be careful with it. You've got to have good throttle control and progressive braking. Otherwise, you know, it's going to want to flip the front up and uh, flip the back out, which is impressive. You think how heavy it is. But yeah, what gets me actually is the size of this. When I get back to street bike on Friday, when I take it back, I'll let Friday Saturday, I want to put this next to, say, for instance, the R1 and show you kind of the difference in size. They keep going on about how big it is and that. But obviously, with that engine, it doesn't matter that it is bigger. And um, I'll get Jace to go through all the dry weight and tech specs and put a link on that on the independent site. But yeah. I, I just generally for me personally the experience of riding this say it was always going to be a bit strange coming off the R1 if I'd have probably come off like a Harley for instance onto this it would have just been the greatest thing in the world but I've got to admit I've been really really enjoying it it's got to be up there with one of the best bikes money can buy um, it comes in under 10 grand as well which for the power and the, the kind of potential and all the gadgets you get on this bike is incredible I mean just look at the dash it looks lovely you've got everything laid out there it's got a gear indicator your speedo which you probably don't want to look at because it goes up to 200 and you're normally going around that. Um, a nice kind of old-fashioned fuel gauge as well, which doesn't keep going up like a lot of the other bikes I've had. Although, the only problem with riding all of these lovely, lovely, lovely bikes that the garage has given me is I don't think I've ever had one where the time's been set right. Um, <laughs> so you get on and you're like, oh, it's nine o'clock. No, it's not. It's dark. And, <laughs> and it's Wednesday evening. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back on this now, go for a bit of a buzz, and then just give you my raw, visceral emotions as soon as I get off it at the other end. And hopefully, it'll be good.
There she blows. Okay, it's a bit unfair to compare her to a whale, but she is just an incredible thing. I personally will rate her as, she's a bit garish, she has that slightly kind of asbo look about her with all the kind of flared arches and the big, big sticking out. But I do personally think this is one of the best looking bikes I've ever ridden. Um, as for pure riding experience, <coughs> honestly it's funny, it's taken me a few days to kind of, to say, get into the mode of this over the R1. And um, having just ridden home, I can tell you, this is incredible. And it is, it's a great bike. I mean obviously everyone knows the boost has got one of the craziest engines around, 1300 in line four that just produces so much torque and power. Um, and yeah, it is big and heavy, you know, it's not a lithe super bike, it's not a Chuxer, it's not a blade, it's not an R1, but <coughs> being a hyper bike, you feel you can just get on this and go forever <laughs> because it is so comfy, it is so uh, easy to ride, you know, okay, it's big and heavy, but at the same time, you can kind of flick it into corners, okay, it's not got the nimbleness of other bikes, but oh, just, you know, on every time you twist that right hand, it kind of doesn't matter. It is brilliantly equipped, Okay, it comes in at under 10 grand when the old one's obviously 11 grand. If you look at all the dials and everything, it's got, for me as a rider, everything you kind of want. Character, personality, it looks amazing, and oh my god, obviously it goes like nothing else. And with the aftermarket cans it's got, the Yoshimura ones, it sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it is hard to kind of compare this, it's not a super work. You would, I generally wouldn't want to take this on a track, but if I was going to go on a massive, massive Sunday ride, you know, up to the Ponderosa Cafe or something, I'd prefer to take something like this than a Blade or an R1 or, or a Ninja because, uh, you, you know, it's just got that bigger cruising potential. I get, like, sore after about an hour on most superbikes because my knees and everything else being six or three, but with this, I took it yesterday for about an hour and a half, and, but no point you to feel that way, which is strange because you are in a kind of riding position, but it's just not as small as other bikes. And, uh, yeah, just as a riding experience, it's blooming amazing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this back to Street Bike on Friday. So I'm going to be having a big chat to Chase then about uh, all the technical stuff on it. Like we did with the R1. So we'll be able to go through and uh, give me a complete rundown and we'll talk about why, how the different Tesla aspects relate to the way I thought I rode. That's what I'm going to try and do now. So I'm going to give you my personal opinion on it and then obviously we'll get, say, the technical side of things and the geeky stuff out of the way. Anyway, I'm off to bed. Uh, well, not bed, but do you know what I mean? Eat, do that kind of stuff. Maybe a cheeky glass of wine, who knows. Uh, probably not though. Maybe a bubble bath? Mm, no, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed, uh, and then tomorrow I'm gonna be getting on that puppy, CB1000F or CBF1000. I never know what they call it. What is it? CBF1000. There we go. Wicked. I knew that. Ride safe.